what's my inspiration for doing this? Just a bit of fun. It was an old frame I had in the, in, in the shed, and I thought, oh, well, <clears throat> we should do something with it, really. And um, I've seen a lot of European fast little scooters, and I thought, oh, we should have a go with this. But the game I was trying to... The whole point of this was trying to get something sub 125cc to go relatively well. And uh, this is the incarnation of it, really. And a lot of the bits and bobs that I've already had here for years, and I, I didn't really um, spend too much money doing it. A lot of the items um, that I use are previous bikes that we built. You know, um, I mean, this even this ignition system that I made, fit for it, made an adapter plate. That came off. The, uh, can you remember what I did the Aprilia bike? Oh, yeah, the SR. Yeah, the race, well, that's off there. Um, uh, an old gas gas 250 cut the reed block out welded that in there uh, i had to make a crankshaft for it <clears throat> and machine the inside of the casings quite a lot of work on the inside doesn't look at so much from the outside to make it all fit what i did with this is try to work the other way around because a lot of people make small frames and they make conversions which are probably good but what i did with this is try to put the items which were designed um for this cylinder for this application so what i i made um the crankshaft of the original item the bmb cast fit inside the casing so i did it the other way around so it'd be quite happy at the rpm um that it was designed to run at rather than using the as you know yourself they're very thin the original and the area is not very big so you can get the uh, purchase across the pin or the correct conrod or the suitable conrod rather um, so I made the crankshaft of the original cart motor fit inside there which was a bit of a task but we got there um, I did originally have a six plate clutch in there but I, it was such a difficult item to service and mess about that we made fit that I gave up on it really so now it's got a, a foul clutch in there but even that's got problems so we got to come back and think of something new for it but we haven't had much time on it really it's just a bit of fun it's a, bit about the top end. Um, it's a BMB KF2 a KF2, they're, they're classes in carts, so you get KF1 with no reed valve, which is a top flight 50 plus horsepower, or thereabouts, anything from 45 above. The KF2, um, I don't know about exact horsepowers, but um, they have a, a, a power valve, a pneumatic power valve, and obviously with this, as you've seen yourself when you've ridden it, the reason why it's so lovely to ride is because that power valve it actually it behaves it does everything it's actually fun to ride it's lovely and um the pipe obviously expansion chamber we made for it but and um the majority of the items obviously we made for it we just had stuff kicking about this item here is off a husk van that i just made fit kicking about um the rads on there they're not particularly expensive ones they're just ones off ebay that i just put on there this um brake calipers from taiwan I bought it years ago and I was just trying to find something to, for it to fit and I found something eventually. Um, I think the biggest bugbear for me actually was this poor little mug guard. Because obviously these are zip forks in here and as you probably know the springs on the other side originally. And I spent all evening making this mug guard. Oh, it took me hours to make it, about 20 pieces of steel. And uh, Phil came in the next day and says, oh you can buy one of those for £50, a fibreglass one. So I was very disappointed when I found out that. <laughs> I should have just bought one. Um, what about these two then? Uh, I had that as well. I got that from Taiwan years ago and I just tried to find something for it to fit. It just settled it down because it wheelies a lot. And as you know with small frames, they're very light on the front end and it just, man, it just, it just settles the front end down when the wheel comes off the floor. Um, it's got a Panasco tubeless rim on the rear. Um, the cans off an RS125, quite popular now. I think a lot of people tend to use those type of cans. They're not particularly expensive. I think we had that in the back uh, storeroom kicking about, so I use that. Um, it's got a little fuel pump on there that I put in there. Um, and just some stock Panasco shock absorbers. This is just a bit of tube and I fold it a bit for hold the battery in the front. Because they're quite flexible, the frames. So you need to put something in there. Um, otherwise you'll end up bending the frame and pretty much I can't think um, Let me see. Oh, just a bit of aluminium we just I've got some foam and put it on there nothing too elaborate 
But uh, it's not until, it's hard to explain, but until you ride it, as you know yourself, it's actually a joy to ride. And it goes like stink. You know, um, I like to see a sub 125 bike as quick as that and behave like that. And, and it's just a nice bike. So you've got a, so actually we got a, a learner legal rocket ship there. <laughs> just about learner legal. <laughs> yeah. Because I mean, a lot of the fast bikes, they do some fantastic bikes from Europe. I've seen them, but they're all like 170s, 150s, 190s, and they're climbing the cubic capacity ladder now. But um, to be fair, that bike is so fast, that engine's so fast for that chassis, you'd struggle to go any quicker, really. What are you going to do with it? Just look at it, I suppose. Are going to misprint it? Uh, well, we might do, yes. We, we take it out just for a bit of fun, you know. Um, it's all a bit of fun, that's what we like to do. Nothing too traumatic. Uh, we, I think we have a 48 horsepower, 47 and a bit. Yes, yeah, plenty, plenty, plenty enough. Because it's only a little 125, so even though it has incredible horsepower, the torque, it's not like a bigger cubic capacity machine because you physically have the torque in it. But, um, but in saying that, when you ride it around the block, it actually behaves lovely and, and you can ride it like a normal bike. You, you wouldn't know any... It, actually, round town, it behaves like a P200. You know, it's nice. So it's, it's got the package here, but we might do something with increase the horsepower, perhaps, or... I'm not quite sure, really. I need to really take it sprinting, let everybody beat me, and it might gear me on to do something more. <laughs> so I'm probably that's, that'll happen, probably. I take it somewhere and realise... The property's not as quick as what I think it is, and maybe we may need to do a bit more work on it. But this is just the first incarnation of it, really. Maybe in the winter when it gets a bit quiet, we might do something with it. But first of all, I need to... Um, I was thinking of taking it to Brighton. Maybe Shelsley Walsh. Which is just up the, up the road, up the hill climb. But that's what really spurs people on, is when you get beaten, I suppose. So that's what we need to do, get beaten, and then we might spur us on to do something amazing, I suppose. Because we've been there before, done it before, I realise how much time and effort goes into these machines and my, you know, my heart goes out to these racers or sprinters that spend all their time in the garage messing with them. I realise how much time is needed and I've got a young family so, it, and a business to run so for us it's just a bit of fun at the moment but uh, I know how much time and effort goes in so my, you know, whenever I see these new bikes, these quick bikes, I always think fair play because I know how much effort goes in. Oh, my God. 